Hello there, and welcome. I am thrilled to announce the release of Naviate Architecture for Revit 2026 in the form of Naviate 2026.0.0. This release is bringing the Naviate Architecture features into Revit 2026, along with a handful of improvements to the Naviate Architecture experience. Several of these improvements include a reconfiguration of the Naviate architecture toolbar itself, where we've rearranged the location of some of the features, grouped some of the features together to make it a bit more coherent. We've also made some improvements to the Manage Coverings feature. The Curtain Grid Designer also has some feature improvements where we can select multiple Curtain Grid elements to design. And lastly, we've also made some improvements to Door Window UIDs and the Manage Door Window UIDs users interfaces. Now let's take a look at what these feature improvements look like within Revit 2026. Let's start by taking a look at some of the reconfiguring we did within the Naviate Architecture Toolbar. We spent a bit of time rearranging and reconfiguring where some of the features live within Naviate Architecture to make them easier to find and also to take up less space in your ribbon. We started by moving some of the new room data features into the room data dropdown. So we have the room finishes and the export rooms functions now within the room data dropdown. We also moved the settings related to exporting rooms to the room tools dropdown. So that also doesn't take up any additional room on the ribbon. It lives within that flyout as well. We did some similar things within the area tools Within areas, we moved the create boundary lines feature to the areas dropdown. And we also moved the 3D zones and reference views from 3D zones into a 3D zones dropdown. Again, to consolidate some of these features to give us a little bit more space within our ribbon so it doesn't feel so congested. With the US and UK installs of Naviate Architecture, we also got rid of the import export panel. If you need access to the import export panel, you can grab it by using the help configure navigate function. And from there, you could specify either the international or some of the other European standards to install. And that will give you back the import export function. Once you run that configuration, you will need to restart Revit. But once you restart, you'll have access to that import export function, depending on which standard you installed. So that is an overview of some of the cleanup we did with the Naviate Architecture Toolbar in this release. Now that we've reviewed the changes that we've made to the Naviate Architecture ribbon, let's take a look at some of the other feature improvements we've made in this release, starting with updates that we've made to the Manage Coverings feature. In this release, we've updated the Manage Coverings feature to allow users to actually change the coverings that they've already created using the Create Coverings feature within their rooms. To do this, all we have to do is select the rooms that we wish to change the coverings for. And once we've got our rooms selected, we can come into Navigate Architecture, launch our Manage Coverings feature, and there we will see a list of the different coverings we have for our rooms selected and the checkboxes showing that the coverings are currently active within those rooms. And then down below that, we have the option to change the different floor, ceiling, and wall covering types via a dropdown. We have the option to either remove the existing coverings or change them to different types, depending on what is built within our model. Once we've gone ahead and assigned any changes we wish to enact on the room coverings for the rooms we have selected, we can hit update. And Naviate Architecture will go ahead and update the coverings of those rooms, allowing us to completely change any of the designs within our rooms without having to delete the coverings and recreate them using the Create Coverings feature once again, like we would have done previously. So that is the update we have enacted in the Manage Coverings feature in this release. Now let's take a look at some of the feature improvements we've made to the Curtain Grid Designer in this release. The Curtain Grid Designer now offers users the ability to apply Curtain Grid designs to multiple curtain wall elements at one time. In the previous versions, we had to do one wall at a time. Now we can select multiples to apply a design to. For example, I have these two curtain walls here. If I select both of them, 
I can come into Navigate Architecture. I can open my Curtain Grid Designer. And you'll notice that we have some changes to the UI in this release pertaining to this particular change to the Curtain Grid Designer. So we now have a drop down here that allows us to select from the curtain grids that we may have selected if we've got multiples selected. Uh, everything else is the same. We did change the curtain wall type information that is being provided to us. This uh, more is more in alignment with the actual properties of those curtain walls as they are written in Revit natively. So we've aligned with the Revit properties of these curtain walls down here. Uh, aside from that, we can go ahead and design or apply save designs to multiple curtain walls at one time. So if I wanted to quickly design these two curtain walls and uh, give them some designs here, we could do so rather quickly. And I can go ahead and hit apply. And you'll notice there in the background that it applied both of the design to both of those wall elements at once. And I've got them both selected still. I do wanna just demonstrate how the curtain grid designer is handling the removal of curtain grid elements as your designs change and evolve. So if I wanted to change this to one of my other predefined where I've only got horizontal or only vertical mullions, I could do so by using one of the pre-selected designs that I have saved. And if I go ahead and hit apply, I'm going to get this warning letting me know that some of the elements in my current design are marked for deletion. I'm going to get that for each wall that is impacted. So if I've selected three, five, six, however many walls, I'm gonna get this warning for each wall that is being impacted by this change. I just go ahead and hit okay for each wall. And there you can see the changes being made to both walls. So those are the improvements that we've included with the Curtain Grid Designer in this release. The ability to apply designs or straight up design multiple curtain walls at one time. In this release, we're also including a minor update to the door window UIDs and manage door window UIDs functions to improve clarity around the user interfaces and certain information that gets provided within those user interfaces. To provide better clarity around the state of door window UIDs, we've updated when and how the previous and current columns are displayed. The current column previously did not reflect the updated values, but the values before an update. The correct updated values could only be verified by running the Manage Door Window UID tool. For this reason, we decided to remove the previous column during Door Window UID run. If you want to check the updated values, you can run the Manage Door Window UID separately. Let's see what that looks like when running this workflow. If I were to run Door UIDs, configure my Door UID as desired, During the initial run of door or window UIDs, you'll notice that we only have the current UID column visible to us where it is displaying what those doors and windows are currently numbered before running the update. After initially running the door or window UID feature, we can go into the manage UIDs function. And here we will see the previous UID prior to the last run and the current UID. And each time we run the door or window UIDs going forward, the previous and current UID columns will update based on the last round of updates from these features. So that is the minor update we made to the door and window UIDs and manage UIDs interfaces. And that is a look at the feature improvements we're making with the release of Naviate Architecture 2026.0.0 for Revit 2026. Now these feature improvements are currently only being released for Revit 2026, but they will be coming to Naviate Architecture for Revit 2023, 2024, and 2025 in a later release. So be on the lookout for notifications around when that release will be coming. That's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video informative. Stay tuned for more information on future updates.